Well, the murder trial of Monica Kimani and the delivery of the judgment that found Joseph Irungu guilty and acquitted Jackie Maribe, albeit with censure, has thrust previously little-known Judge Grace Nzioka into the limelight. The presiding judge in Naivasha captivated the country with the ease and masterful delivery of the lengthy judgment in an easy-to-comprehend style that has earned her accolades. Brenda Wanga reports. When Justice Grace Lidembunzioka stepped into the courtroom Friday morning, she knew that she held the collective attention of the country, eager to know the outcome of one of the most high-profile murder cases in recent times in Kenya. And she did not waste time getting straight into the substance of the matter at hand. The two accused persons are jointly charged with an offence of murder. That is an offence established under Section 203 of our penal code. But it was the manner in which she delivered the judgment, initially laid out in more than 400 pages, but later summarized for the delivery that perhaps stood out in the minds of many. Unlike other cases that have equally been broadcast live, Justice Nzioka was keen to carry the packed courtroom and the thousands watching the verdict. I have chosen to take the path of looking at the evidence that relates to the first accused first in relation to that issue and then go to the evidence relating to the second accused person for ease of understanding and flow of the judgment. And so right now I'm analyzing the evidence the prosecution have adduced. The language used in the delivery was simple, devoid of the legal jargon that often confuses the ordinary man. Beyond her mastery and simplification of the language, the flow of the delivery of the verdict was also easy to follow. Let's take the first issue. And the question is, did the first accused person know the deceased prior to her death? And this question has arisen because the evidence of the first accused person is, I did not know the deceased at all prior to her death. So let's analyze the evidence together. I have considered the prosecution evidence and the evidence of P. She was keen to allow the viewers and the listeners to follow the story where the evidence led, keen also to explain why she arrived at the decisions she made. Even when the prosecution and the defense appeared to miss some aspects of the evidence, she stepped in. But it was very clear, no one disputed that the first accused person is supposed and was wearing a maroon cap. So a lot, a lot of questions was on white council, white council, and the brown shirt, no question on the maroon cap. Yet, this maroon cap knits and joins right from the house where the first accused left. The house help says he wore a maroon cap. Jenny at Road House, he wore a maroon cap. You go to Chalagat, he had a maroon cap. You go to the guard at Ramuria, Harun had a maroon cap. You go to the witnesses who are in that house, he had a maroon cap. A maroon cap has been produced in this court. Does the accused person say it's not mine? No evidence to that effect. Justice Grace Nzioka isn't a stranger on the bench, though. She has served for years as a judicial officer, rising through the ranks to become a judge of the High Court. She has served in various divisions, including the commercial and criminal divisions. Her career in law hasn't been smooth sailing, though. In 2013, she was accused of disrespecting advocates appearing before her. She was also accused of operating in a style and conduct that was unbecoming, thereby affecting the dispensation of justice to the public. She previously headed a commission of inquiry into the Tana Delta clashes. She was also involved in the 1.6 billion shillings case between the former minister Rafael Tuju and the East Africa Development Bank. She was recently transferred to serve as a presiding judge in Ivasha last year. Okay. If you want to know my workload, please visit Naivasha. You will understand. Brenda Wanga, Citizen TV.